welcome to my channel. I'm Jana from Pearl Together. A bunch of people in the group have wanted to learn two color brioche. So we're going to undertake just making a really simple beanie for this fall. We're going to have a quick little knit along with a brioche basic beanie knitted in the round. And then right away after that, right on the heels of that, we're going to do a brioche scarf, which is knitted back and forth so that together we can learn increases and decreases in a pattern. It's really kind of cool. So I'll put the links to the patterns down below, but let's get started first with a basic brioche two color beanie. So what you're going to need for this is size five circular needles, size eight circular needles, and then a couple of contrasting colors of worsted weight yarn. I wasn't sure how these would look together, but my daughter picked them, so we're going with it. All right, I'm using just a simple worsted uh, Plymouth tweed. You use whatever worsted weight you have. Before we do, though, I want to give a hearty thank you to all the people that support me over on Patreon.com. You can go check out Patreon.com forward slash Pearl Together to see what kinds of patron rewards I'm offering for your financial support. People have chosen to pledge just a few dollars a month to support this channel, and that help keep, helps keep videos coming to you each and every week. So thank you so much for your support over on Patreon.com. All right, let's get started. All right, so I'm at the beginning of the pattern where I have cast on using a number eight circular needle, then I've changed these number fives, US number five, and then I've knitted one round. So I am at the beginning of the round. I'm choosing the magic loop, but I have the beginning of the round in the middle of one side because I want to show you how to mitigate the beginning of the round. That's where a lot of people, myself included, tend to make mistakes at the beginning and end of the round. So um, I didn't want to have my magic loop junctions there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a beginning of the round marker here because although my cast on tail is here, after we get going and we had several inches knitted on, I want to be able to, you know, carry this along with me and easily see where the beginning of the round is rather than trying to trace those columns back down, you know, several inches. What we're going to do now that we have uh, cast on a knitted one round. Now we're going to introduce our contrasting color, which is this lighter green. Now hopefully this is not going to be too dark for you to see, but I wanted there to be a pretty stark contrast between my light green and dark green so that you can see what the deal is. So for my purposes, I'm going to have my main color be the dark color, dark for bark, bark meaning a brioche knit. And I will also be uploading simultaneously to this video um, some beginning basic brioche knit video and then a brioche pearl video that you can refer to. So bark is dark or knit. My brioche knit will be the main color and my contrasting color is this lighter yarn. So I'm just going to hold this on my, you know, tuck this back here in my left hand and following the instructions that are specifically in parentheses for the setup round with the contrasting yarn toward the front. So I want to bring it through toward the front. Okay slip the main color stitch. So let's do that. All right, slip that first main color stitch like that. Now we're going to do a yarn over with the contrasting color. So yo, and then we're going to purl. Okay, so we're going to slip yo purl. All right, so the yarn is to the front now because we've ended with a purl stitch and so that's where our yarn is by default. And we're going to slip yarn over or yo and purl. Slip yo pearl. That is our mantra for the setup round. Slip yo pearl. Okay. Slip yarn over and pearl. So that is it. Pretty simple. That's it for the setup round. So go all the way around doing that. Now I'll show you what happens when you get to your magic loop junction. If you're magic looping with me, we're going to want to be careful not to lose our yarn overs at the junction of our cables. So I'll address that here in just a few stitches. Okay, slip yo pearl. So we're ending with a pearl at our magic loop junction. That's pretty simple. So if you haven't magic looped with me before, we're just going to go ahead and let this go. And I like to go ahead and pull my cable. I'm still holding on to this needle where I was and I'm just pulling, pulling the cable that's free from the needle that I just got done working. Okay, then I'm going to pull the needle that I just got done working. I'm still holding on to this, by the way, and that's falling to the front as it should. So just arrange your needles, work that around. Okay, so this is falling forward. All right, now I'm working this around. And the next thing I'm going to do is slip, right? So I'm slipping that main color stitch. 
and I'm going to yarn over. So if you were to visualize this like this, like you're just knitting in the round, if you have um, short enough cables that you can just go round and round and not magic loop, then do that. But what I want to do here is I'm going to slip this one, then I'm going to yarn over. So we're, don't let the cable junction throw you off. We're still doing the exact same thing. I'm slipping, yarn over, and purl. All right. Okay, carry on all the way around to the beginning and I'll meet you there. Okay, now I'm nearing another cable junction of my magic loop, so I'll just go ahead and show you a couple more times how I'm gonna handle that. So I've just finished my brioche purl and I'm gonna slip, yarn over, purl, all right, slip, yarn over, purl, okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and adjust my cables as we normally do with Magic Loop. Okay, just arrange that. And your yarn's coming off the front as it should be. Okay, work around that other needle and we're going to slip just like normal. Okay, slip that off, yarn over and purl. Okay, slip, yo, purl slip yo pearl all right carry on until we get to the beginning of the round and i'll meet you there okay i've ended that with a pearl okay we did a slip yarn over pearl and your pearl yarn is coming off the front so you want to just leave that toward the front the yarn that you're purling purling with whether that's a regular pearl or a brioche pearl you want to leave that coming off the front as it normally should because you're purling. All right, now we're going to move on to row one. Slip your beginning of the round marker and we're gonna move on to row one, which will be a brioche knit. Okay, I'm just gonna put, this is my other tail. I'm arranging that at the back. Our brioche knit yarn is coming off the back as it should, a brioche knit, as with a regular knit, begins with the yarn in the back. So you always want to leave this yarn hanging to the back at the end of your row. And I think that's where sometimes, um, I know I get got mixed up and sometimes still do, but watch for that and see if you can make sure to mitigate that in the future. Okay, so with round one, we want to brioche knit, which means our brioche knit is going to be, that we had, okay, this tail, you want to make sure this is over like this because it starts with the yarn over. So a brioche knit is simply, as you'll see in, the, in uh, the basic brioche knit video that I'll link to down below, it's simply knitting a regular knit stitch with its contrasting color yarn over. So we're gonna just brioche knit that, and then we're gonna slip the next stitch after we bring the yarn forward. So brioche knit, yarn forward, slip as if to purl. So now everything we slip is if to purl. Always slip your stitches as if to purl unless the pattern indicates otherwise. So now we're gonna brioche knit the next stitch with its yarn over. So you're doing both of these together. And when we do that, we're gonna inadvertently create a yarn over when we take this to the back to do our counterclockwise wrap, just like a normal knit stitch. But because we brought our yarn forward before the stitch that we slipped, we have created our yarn over by taking the yarn to the back then to do our wrap for the knit stitch, okay? I hope that makes sense. So watch again, after you do your bark or brioche knit, you bring the yarn forward, slip the next stitch. Now you'll notice that yarn over was kind of over this stitch and I just moved it aside because you, the slip, stitch that you're slipping is always the opposite color of the one that's in your working yarn hand. Whether you're continental knitting or throwing, the stitch that you're slipping is the opposite color, or this is a purl stitch, right? We're doing brioche knit, the purl stitch is the one we slip. Now that's true for single color brioche or two color brioche. So we're slipping that one, and now we're gonna bark or brioche knit the next stitch with its yarn over together, okay? And by doing so, we've created the yarn over over the stitch that we slipped, okay? Bring your yarn forward, slip, bark or brioche knit, all right? Yarn forward, slip, bark, all right? Here's my mantra, forward, slip, 
spark. Forward, slip, bark. And you'll just get in a rhythm. Forward, slip, bark. Forward, slip, bark. That was just the tail. I'm moving that out of the way. Okay, forward, slip, bark. Let me do a couple more and I'll show you what happens when we get to the juncture. Forward. Now this yarn, yarn over was kind of stuck with this purl, so I just moved it with my finger because your purl stitch needs to be slipped by itself. The yarn over belongs with the bark stitch or the brioche knit. It belongs with the stitch that you're working. That's true for the purl side as well. So bring your yarn forward and slip. And now we have our cable junction, but don't let that throw you off. Just hang on to all of this. Pull your cable through. Bring this one back, slide, slide, slide. Okay, now this is gonna come forward for a second and just hang there while I arrange this. But I'm about to knit this, right? I'm just gonna stick this through here and hang on to it. This is coming forward. I want this to become a yarn over and it will when I just go and wrap this like normal. Okay, so there's my brioche knit. So carry on, forward, slip, bark forward, slip, bark. All right, now if we carry on with this and we look at the end of the round, round one, we're gonna be ending this round with a slip yarn over. So I'll show you what that looks like when we get to the very end of the round. Okay, so as you're moving around, you'll get used to how this looks, but mostly what I want you to remember and realize is that you're always slipping the stitch that is the opposite of what you're knit doing. So this is a bark round or a brioche knit round where I'm holding the contrasting color in working yarn in my right hand or left if you're knitting continental. But the point is that the brioche knit is the main color. So I'm slipping the one that is the purl stitch or the opposite one. And then I'm brioche knitting with its yarn over. So you want to make sure that you have the yarn over paired with whichever knit round or purl round that it is. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, throw a comment down below if you have any questions about that. Hopefully that's clear. So I'm slipping that one and I've brought my yarn to the front, slip and brioche knit. Okay, when we get to the end of the round, I'll show you how that's gonna to work. Now, this is the, the, this is the main color or the brioche knit round. So we're going to leave our yarn. When we're done with this particular row, we're gonna leave our yarn toward the back because it is a knit yarn or knit round. So it takes two rounds or two passes to make one brioche knit round. So we're doing the knit knit round currently. The next pass around, the next trip around the needles will be the purl round. So you have to do a knit round and a purl one to equal one brioche round. So I hope that makes sense. So bring your yarn forward, slip, bark okay now our bri our brioche knit round ends with a yarn forward slip but we want to leave this to the back because we do want to create that yarn over for this purl stitch so that has to be paired with this lighter green yarn so we need to leave this to the back now if it accidentally flops forward in the course of your work you'll get used to seeing that you'll be able to identify that and you'll think oh that has to go to the back. I know that's true. And you'll notice that when we come back around, you'll be able to recognize if that has happened. Okay, so slip your beginning of the round marker. All right. Now I have my, I'm set up for my brioche pearl round. Here is my working contrasting color. And that's coming off the front as a pearl stitch should. Now what we want to do is slip the knit stitch that we just made. Remember, we're slipping the one that is opposite of the one we're holding for our working yarn. And now we're doing our yarn over after we do the slip slit. So we're gonna yarn over after the slip stitch, and now we're gonna brioche pearl or burp. Okay, slip the knit one, yarn over, brioche pearl or burp. So your mantra going around this one will be slip, yo, or yarn over, burp. Slip, yo, burp. <laughs> I can't even say that. Slip, yo, burp. Okay, slip, yo, burp. 
Okay, let's take a look at what happens here. When we do this, when we're doing all these yarn overs, we're creating a little, a little coat or a little uh, shawl for the stitch. See how that wraps around the back of that knit stitch and that creates a little, a little scarf or a little shawl. And you need to watch for that to make sure that happens. So we're creating another one when we slip it and we do a yarn over, we're actually creating another little shawl or coat for that stitch and then we do our regular purl. So I hope that helps you to be able to recognize and read your brioche knitting. It's not easy. I will tell you it is not easy. Um, I am, I would still say a novice brioche knitter. I don't have a ton of experience doing that and it does take practice to find your mistakes. So given that, I would suggest using a lifeline if you are at all a little hesitant or uncertain, uncertain I would stick a lifeline in um, pretty frequently. Okay, so when we come up to our cable, we have ended with a burp or a brioche purl. So we're gonna work our, work our cables through, pull the cables through as you do with Magic Loop. Go ahead and do that arrangement for yourself. Okay, we ended with a brioche purl and our yarn is coming off of the front. So our, the next thing we're gonna do is slip, slip that stitch and do your, simply do your yarn over and carry on. Slip, yo, burp. Okay. I'll go ahead and go around and show you what we're gonna, how we're gonna recognize things when we get to the beginning of the round. All right, I've come almost to the end of the round here. And so I'm just gonna slip this last one, yarn over, and brioche pearl, but you're no, notice here that there is no yarn over with this pearl. So exactly what I suspected might happen, in fact did. And that knit stitch, the knit that we had left to the back, it flopped itself over when I was rearranging my magic loop. It, it actually did flop itself over and that will cause um, issues and it will cause a kind of a whole thing to look funny and you won't have um, the shawl that you need around that brioche pearl. So simply move that to the back. Learn to watch for that and know that when you brioche pearl or brioche knit, you need to be doing the knit or the pearl in conjunction with its yarn over. So you have to have both loops on your needle and you do that as a paired or a twin, not twin, but a paired stitch. You have to do that together. Okay, so I had to flip that darker color back to the back where it ought to be so that I can purl that purl stitch together with the darker color yarn over. Okay, so now it has its double thickness around the base and all is as it should be. So leave this purl yarn contrasting color toward the front and now we've mitigated the problem that we had with the, the knit. So that goes to, that stays in the back and then we slip our beginning of the round marker. Okay, you can stay to Georgia, can come to the front. And now we're gonna brioche knit. We know we're on track because this is the knit column. You'll be, that will emerge, you'll see that more clearly. And I realize that my camera might not be picking up the darkness of that, but you can tell that that's a knit column, a knit stitch, and then the lighter is the pearl. And you'll see that more clearly. And brioche is reversible. So on the other side, the light color will show up as the knit. So, but on the right side or the side that, that I am calling the right side, the brioche knit is my main color or the, what I've chosen to be the dark, the darker yarn. Bark for dark. Okay, so brioche knit, yarn forward, slip, and you'll notice this yarn over was hung up on that slip and I had to like pop it off. I had to fix that real quick. And that will happen from occasion. You just need to remember that when you're knitting or purling brioche, you need to be doing it with its yarn, yarn over that goes with it. So bring your yarn forward, slip the purl, and knit, brioche knit. Okay, forward, slip, bark. Carry on all the way around. All right, I'm gonna do a few inches so you can see what it looks like when we have it more established. And uh, yeah, it takes, you know, eight to 10 rows to really have a good pattern established where you can like really start to recognize the columns and see what's what. All right, I've done several inches here and I wanna show you how this is in fact reversible. So you can tell on this 
right side, the darker yarn is the knit columns, but on the opposite side, then my lighter colored yarn is the knit columns. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you are knitting the largest size, the pattern calls for about 11 inches here. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna do that much or not. The idea is for the, for you to have the cuff that turns up quite a lot. And the other, whoops, look at that. There's a mistake right there. Look at that. And it created a weird little hole. So you can plainly see that I have a mistake right there. Now, if I were so, oh, yep, yeah, see, if I were so inclined, and maybe I am and maybe I'm not, <laughs> I would uh, turn this inside out because you want to fix Brio stitches on the knit side. And then I would drop down and fix that. I might in fact do that just as an exercise tip to see if I can. Um, and if I bungle it, then I'll be ripping back to this spot. Now, if you make a mistake like that, you can choose whether to fix it or leave it or, or whatever. Um, I, I might go ahead and try just as an exercise. Fixing a drop stitch in brioche or fixing a mistake like this is not necessarily easy. Um, yeah, I can put some links down below for, for some videos that you can watch if you are so inclined. Since I am, you know, just beginning to learn how to fix them myself. So nevertheless, what I'm saying is I'm not sure how tall I'm going to knit mine. Depends on how much of a, a brim, if any, that you want to be turned over. So you can decide about that. However, the decreases on this particular pattern are very quick. It's only like three rows and you decrease in very, very quickly. So there's not much of a, there's not much of a rounded crown is the point. So you'll want to have the height that you want to have in total before you begin the decreases. So I will upload another video in just a couple of days, uh, probably this Friday. If you want to go ahead and knit through your hat and then I'll show you how to do the brioche decrease in just about three days. But for now, uh, sh yeah, drop a picture in the groups on Facebook or Ravelry and show me your hat. All right, I'm gonna continue knitting round and round on my beanie and I'll have to decide when I think it's tall enough. You decide whether you wanna have that double cuff that looks pretty cool and it obviously provides a bunch more warmth around your forehead and your ears if you want that double thickness um, or not. Try it on as you go along and see. But keep in mind, as I said, that as soon as we start the decreases, it's going to go in really fast. It will not add any more height at all to the hat. So make sure it's as tall as you want it to be before we start those simple three decrease rounds. All right. This is Tuesday when this is uploaded and you'll see this. Um, I believe on Friday is when I'll upload the quick little video that's going to show you how we're going to do the brioche decreases. And then we'll be done with our hat. As always, be sure to join us on Facebook and Ravelry. I'd love to see photos of the yarns that you have chosen to pair together for your beanies. Um, I'd love to see your work in progress photos, particularly tomorrow in the Facebook group is Work in Progress Wednesday. Show us that link to your project page. I look forward to seeing your projects. Thanks for watching. <laughs>